I'd really like to welcome you here today. It, this is a very important event for us um, in the Regional Assembly as part of the implementation of the RESIS kind of sets the context of um, moving out of the into the implementation, the in, implementation phase. I suppose it, importantly, it kind of frames the importance of the contributions from the Department of Transport, National Transport Authority, and TII to achieve the shared goals of, of sustainable mobility in our region and the integration and interaction between the national level, the regional level, and the local. And it's also important, I think, to set the context of how the RESIS and the initiatives that we've undertaken in the RESIS kind of build towards a stronger economy and lower carbon future, particularly through uh, tenement city and town concepts and, and how these can be achieved. And as I say, um, well, an emphasis today is on collaboration and, uh, and, and, and that's very important. So uh, next slide, please. Just, just a reminder um, of why this is important, and this flows very much from what the Minister is, 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 ha, has said, uh, why it's important that we, we progress sustainable mobility. Just on the slide there is a snapshot from the last census, and our region as a whole has a higher private transport use, usage than the state. If we've, um, We've lower public transport usage and lower walking and cycling usage as a means, means of travel to work. So it is, there's a clear issue for us to address. And, um, you know, those, those statistics are, you know, even more salutary when you think of the fact that in our region, we have three of the five cities in the state, uh, Cork, Limerick and Waterford. So we've a lot of positives there, but we've a lot to build on as well. So if we wish to progress as a smart region, as a green region, we need more actions to, to, for implementation here, and actions in land use and transport, and, and plans to achieve the modal change and how, how we reduce carbon emissions from the transport section. So we, we have a stronger call to action than ever before, as, as well as those facts that no uh, statutory and legislative requirement that public bodies must take account of the Climate Action Plan and the new uh, Low Carbon Development Act 2021 in the performance of their functions. Specifically in relation to greenhouse and gas emissions, the Act requires a total reduction of 51% of such emissions over the period to 2030 relative to the baseline of 2018. And it's understood that the transport section will be required to achieve this 51% re reduction in full. So, you know, that frames the, the challenge that, that, that we face. Next slide, please. Well, just to go back to where the starting point for this, um, well, the starting point is the National Planning Framework, but in terms of our work, it's where what's set out in the Regional Spatial and Economic Strategy and the Metropolitan Area Strategic Plans for Cork, Limerick, Shannon and Waterford, which came into effect on the 31st of January in, 20, in 2020. They set out a 12-year statutory strategic planning and economic development framework for future economic and spatial development in the southern region, in line with the objectives of the, of the National Planning Framework and the National Development Plan, and our collective journey of a 50-50 distribution of growth between the eastern and Midlands region and the southern and northern western regions, with 75% of growth to be outside Dublin and its suburbs. Like the, this is core really to the work we're at um, in terms of the southern region and the challenge set out in the NPF of the, of the transition of Ireland. Um, the, the, this, the, this, uh, the, this is central to the work we do. And, and as part of that, the vision set out in the regional spatial and economic strategy is for the southern region to become one of Europe's most creative and innovative, livable and greenest regions. Next slide, please. As I say, the primary objective of the RESIS is to implement Project Ireland 2040 and um, the, the, the transition of growth from the Eastern Midland region to the Southern region, and Northern Western region. And, and I suppose in practical terms, that means that over the next 20 years, there's an additional million population in the state. And for us in the Southern region, that that will require an additional 380,000 people to 2 million in total in the region and a growth of employment by 225,000 
to, to 2040. Um, particularly challenging within that is each of our three cities, Cork, Limerick and Waterford, are targeted to grow by 50% growth over this period. Like that's 50% of growth in 20 year period over what they've achieved through all the history. So that's, that, that, you know, that point frames the challenge that we face. Compact growth will see at least 50% of all new housing developed within existing footprints for our cities through regeneration and infill development with compact growth targets at 30% for all other settlements. So the Project Iron 2040 is a, is a very radical document when, when you, you delve into it. Like, and we seek to capitalize on that for our region through the, the strengths we have in the region. The strengths are clear if you look at the, the map there. We've got three cities, we have a very strong network of towns and rural areas. So we've a lot going for us. And that feeds into our economic strategy, which aligns with the spatial strategy, supports quality place making for economic growth, and an emphasis on the cities, um, the growth of the Atlantic Economic Corridor, the development of the Eastern Economic Corridor, development of our 14 key towns, and the network of towns and villages as, as key economic drivers. But look, bringing that all together is uh, transportation and, and connectivity and the efficient and sustainable movement of people and goods between our economic engines along our economic corridors to our strategic port and airport assets and the increased sustainable mobility within and between our settlements is key to enhancing our competitiveness and the lower carbon future set out in Project Iron 2040. So look, it's 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 obvious, but transportation is key to that change. It ties everything together, and it brings it brings that economic and spatial aspect together. So it's fundamental to the work we're doing. Next slide, please. The the the, the research itself, in an overall sense, in 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 the achievement of our objectives, sets out eleven strategic outcomes or st strategy statements. And I suppose the importance of transport to that is that you know at least five of those are directly related to transportation. They include low carbon, climate resilient society, compact growth, sustainable planned and infrastructure led development, enhanced regional accessibility. And sustainable mobility. So nearly 50% of our overall objectives are, are, are rooted in transportation. And they're cross-cutting, you know, they, they impact on the spatial, on the economic, um, the, our objective for a strong economy, high quality international connectivity, strengthened rural economies and communities, and a healthy region. And these aren't set in stone. Things move forward very quickly. Um, as evidence from COVID-19, but also Brexit in the last uh, year, or the, the, the transportation movements within our region have, have changed dramatically through to our port. So, you know, th things change very quickly and we have to be resilient to adapt to that. It's, it's therefore important that growth in our region is transport led and we, we are supporting actions throughout the city and county development plans uh, for metropolitan transport strategies, local transport plans, and 15 tenant city and town concepts. So the work we've done in the statutory recess is now flowing through to the city and county development plans, and all 10 plans are in progress. And indeed, um, or the first of those, Kilkenny, uh, has been adopted. And interestingly, that that has that is to the fore in uh, the local transport planning side of things. So we are making progress now. Um, so, what we want to do today is through the through the presentations you get follow, following this is is to see how uh, work at the national level is is feeding through now down through the regional and to the local level, and you know the presentations will focus on the work of the transport and top authorities, and new policies, framework, toolkits, and and funding streams. Uh, next slide, please. I should say, uh, of course, that we in the southern region we're we're not a transportation authority, but I think the key to our role, and as evidenced by events today, is that we have a coordination role uh, between the national and the local level. 
and we work very closely with the Department of Transport, the NTA, TII, and local authorities on implementation of objectives under the Regional Transport Strategy that is set out in, in Chapter 6 of the RESIS. And we're continued collaboration with central government, the OPR for training opportunities, transport authorities, local authorities, and the community and transport and mobility forums uh, is very important. And you know, all those bodies, um, as we developed the RESIS um, over a two, three year period, they were fundamental to that. Uh, the development of the RESIS in, I suppose, in, in bringing forward the national level under the national planning framework had to give expression to local uh, and, and regional uh, stakeholders. So that was very important to us. Uh, next slide, please. Yep. We also welcome um, the support of the event today from the Office of Planning Regulator, given their statutory training role. And I know, for example, the recent training for elected members in, in conjunction with the AILG and that, that included a module on transport focusing on the active on active travel. So that working together with the OPR and with other groups is very important to us. I suppose it's 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 important to point that today isn't the, the end of it for us. You know, where this is part of a process uh, of, of, of engagement. And um, we hope to collaborate with the OPR, the NTA, TII, and others to explore future sub-regional and national seminars with local authorities. And these could potentially explore use of area-based transport assessment methodologies, use of transport data tools for evidence-based planning, actions to progress local transport plans, and sharing a good practice. And we, we've good precedents in this, and we, 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 we do this a lot in our work. And for example, we, with local authorities, we took, we, and the, the CAROs, we undertook a series uh, of workshops on, on climate action to assist the local authorities and city development plans uh, in their preparation. That, that was very successful. And that you know, per performs a model of, of the work we, we are hoping to do now in the transport side. Next slide, please. So on the screen, you see examples of some of the objectives that are in the recess in relation to transport. And as I pointed out earlier, they, 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 these are wide ranging related, met, for example, metropolitan area transport strategies, smart mobility. That's a key one for us, in fact, in terms of it's not just about uh, new infrastructure. It's also about changing to, to use new technologies and way of working. So there's a number of examples there of what, what, what's in the recess. And they now are finding their way through to the development plans. And, um, they focus on input from all sectors in the in the preparation of the research and the maths, such as the importance of sustainable mobility. And I suppose as uh, David pointed to, um, as we're now at the implementation phase, we've worked together with the European side of the regional assembly and ourselves to to look at good practice approaches uh, in Europe. And we kind of joined together to do some work on this uh, uh, to, to, to move forward with the implementation side. Uh, next slide, please. So our collabor the collaboration was specifically with the Interreg inter Europe matchup project. And there, that, the objective of that is to foster low carbon multimodal sustainable transport to reduce air, to reduce air pollution and CO2 emissions. This, this project led to the preparation by Arab transport uh, consultants of the 10-minute town accessibility and framework report in 2020. Uh, next slide, please. So what is a 10-minute city or town? Well, def the definition we work to is it's a city or neighborhood that ensures access to a range of community facilities and services in short walking and cycle timeframes from home our access to high quality public transport services, connecting people to large scale settlements and locations of higher order services. To be successful, that you know, really requires principles of compact growth, sustainable higher densities, multimodal interchanges, and higher levels of permeability for walking and cycling to be key to making them work. 
Um, the, the, the concept can also be supported through five minute neighborhoods, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, etc. I think there's a whole range of, of timescales that we're uh, familiar with. And that can, you know, that can be confusing. But what, what's important really is the principles uh, that underline it, uh, that we're promoting an ecosystem of, ecosystem of accessible and the permeable sustainable transport network to enable journeys up for key services by sustainable mode. So it's essentially about just putting in place um, a better way of organizing our towns and villages to optimize um, sustainable transport and, and, and sustainable use. Next slide, please. So in preparing the framework, Arif, they piloted a, a mapping exercise of three of our key towns, Harlow, Ennis and Tralee, uh, one in each of the sub-regions of, of the regional assemblies. So case studies were undertaken to assist the proofs of, proof of the concept and to show examples of how to map catchments, identify constraints and opportunities for, for improvement. Um, it's a tool that can be used by all local authorities and for other settlements. It, it, its aim is to assist the city and county development plan pro policy preparation and implementation and the concepts can be integrated as part of local transport plan preparation. So it's a first step really in analyzing what, what's on the ground and how these can be improved. Um, very importantly, the concept is aligned with other areas for, for particular climate action. And, and importantly, I think for local authorities, the use of the concept is, is, is useful for applying for funding uh, for active travel and transport uh, projects. Uh, throughout the settlements in the region and so and and to encourage transport behavioral change in communities so that that report is there and available it's available on our website um, for, for, for anybody who's interested for, for detail on it so next slide please um, it, uh, just to kind of get to the summy upside in in order to implement our sustainable mobility objectives and the uptake of the 10 minute town Framework Initiative. Um, we've joined today with the Department of Transport, NTA, TIA, and the OPR to create this learning event. Progress in these policies, frameworks, and add to methodology support, they, these all support our research objectives, and they will assist actions in, in the region for sustainable mobility and help us to achieve five, 15, 10 minute city and town concepts. We look forward to learning about progress in other presentations today. We hope all participants take with them enhanced knowledge of progress under this team, which will assist our shared work. We look forward to exploring the potential for follow-up events, and we'll come back to this point at the, at the end on the next steps. Next slide, please. Um, 